Hey guys, and uh, yo, what's up? Welcome to the replay analysis of Platinum League. Protoss is not in this game. <laughs> it's a Zerg versus Terran. <laughs> See how I can recover even if I fuck up? This is a Zerg versus Terran, guys. Ooh, from the Zerg's perspective. Hell yeah. Damn. Let's get it done, dude. Let's get it done, dude. So if you guys don't know replay analysis are, is how I basically watch someone's perspective when they play, and I help them figure out what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, make them not bad at StarCraft, essentially. Help them get better and better and better. No drone split? GG. It's okay. I played against one of the best Zergs in the world by the name of Solar, and he didn't even drone split. I was like, what the fuck? This guy doesn't give a shit. And he proceeded to own me. So, although it does help you a little bit, it is not required. I would, however, say you should totally stack your close matches, because right now, once again, you're doing the common mistake of everybody, of you have three pa drones on one patch that is far, and you have one drone on one patch that is close. Here's the other 25 just cause I love you. Although I'm kinda tight on money, this will be my last replay for a bit much love, man. Hey. I was gonna get this done in five minutes, but now I'll do a real one. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yo, thank you so much. Proxy and chill. I, I was still going to do it either way, but thank you. I appreciate you uh, doing the full amount. Much love, man. And I'm sorry that money's tight for a lot of people. I get it. And uh, I, I would say I highly encourage you to just ask questions for free in the chat. Uh, that, that costs you nothing, right? And like all the YouTube content that I already have is free as well. Um, just do a little bit of investigating, I guess. But much love on the 50, man. I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. And back to the analysis. Yeah. 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 All right, dude. Dude. Okay. Uh, yep. So far, your build's fine. I... Uh, you know what? Actually... Yeah, uh, you're doing. Are you doing? Beta, you're doing beta jam, are you? What's going on? What is this drone doing? You took your third base against Terran? No, no. I highly recommend you don't do this. But we'll talk about it. This is. I'm not gonna go super into detail about why you shouldn't do it. I'll just try to help you actually do it. But just know, disclaimer. Gasless against Terran is fucking super high level. Why? Because Terran has medevacs, and Terran has. Uh, Reapers and Terran has the ability to fucking ruin your drone lines really hard. So many different ways. It is really hard to go gasless against Terran. It is super hard. Now, that being said, let's talk about what you should do. Okay, I don't like this at all. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna go three base, you cannot take a gas this fast. And actually properly utilize it. I would say you should have just done a standard speed link expand at this point. And just actually used your larva properly. See how you can't make a third uh, queen now? Like it's super delayed. Like your first queen's already 12 seconds in. Your second queen is not even started yet. You're trying to spend your larva. You have two larvas still sitting there. Like you can't do all of this at once. You, there are there are the reasons why you can't just do anything you want. There are limitations to your build, and right now you're getting the trade off of a faster third for a delayed queen, and also you're delaying your larva now at your at your main base, which is not ideal. <clears throat> so how do you fix this? Just do a speed link expand. Just literally do a speed link expand. I'm not a big fan of this build anymore. This is no longer gasless. And there's no reason to go for three hatch this fast if you're not going to go gasless. It doesn't actually give you benefits. It actually gives you negatives. Like, look at the... The queen in the main is 28 seconds in. This queen is 15 seconds in. You're 13 seconds behind on your first queen. That is not ideal. And now, also, if you're actually going to make drones out of this base, it's so exposed early on like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Let me make it inject.
You're decently spending your larva. You double inject. Okay, this is even more of the holy fuck territory. If you're going to take a third, no matter what. If I saw this, I'm not going to lie. What I would probably do is I would probably have actually double creep timbered. If I saw this with my overlord. And the reason why is because this is double gas hellion opener. And I would be afraid of hellion drop in my main. And I would be afraid of hellions poking any of my bases of my natural or my third. But just like straight up running at my base or driving there. So if you have no creep, you have no access to queen defense. And if you have no access to queen defense, all of your third base is super exposed. Or either that or your main and natural exposed. Because you can't have your queens rotate. You need to have creep connecting these bases really, really hard. And I would say you need to get rid of the fog of war here by getting creep like there. And then spread it outwards, like spread it here, and then there, and then there, and then jump it over the cliff down and go up. Because you have so much vulnerability now to your build. He's doing an opener that is going to look like it's going to be aggressive, and you're doing an opener that is ridiculously unsafe. Like, you're, you're trying to take a third super fast, which is greedy, and it's putting holes in your build, which is no queens. It's like, or like, it's not no queens. It's just lack of queens. Like you haven't even started a third queen yet. This is this is the kind of shit I'm talking about. Where like, I would, if I were you, I would rather have queens now than the third base. Like, look at the larva. You have six larva sitting here, and it's going to be hard to spend it with making queens. There's still no third queen, so you just spent the larva, which is good, and you're going to get some more now because you just injected again. You have five larva again. But you have no queen again. This build is so fucking risky. And you need queens. You have to make queens against Terran. If you're going to do speedling, expand type stuff. This build is just asking to get punished. And now again, look at your larva. You have eight larva again. And you have just... And here's the thing. Look at the larva though. Or I sorry, look at the queens. You just started queens. And now you have all this fucking larva that you can't spend. It's just too much too fast. You can't afford all of it, and it's inefficient because of this. Like, you're gonna have. You're, you're, you're like cutting something out of your build to then, in the future, have to cut shit out of your build again. So, have seven larvae. And you're spending your money decently, it's just out of order. This guy's build is super weird, too. People play so fucking weird in this, in, in general, <laughs> in this game. Lower league play, players play so fucking awkward, dude. So there you go. Look, he's doing a medevac drop. Now, in general, if someone is going to medevac drop you, generally speaking, that person should hit your main base. They should always hit your main base. It loses all sense of power if they medevac drop your third. Like, there is literally... Why the fuck wouldn't you have just made four aliens and just gone to your third? That's you know that's the rationale there. Like, if you're gonna go to the third, why wouldn't you just try to fucking drive to the third base and just see if you can hit the drones? This makes no sense. Why? Why does that make sense? Why does that make sense? Because the third has no fucking workers at it. It's the last base you have. So if someone's gonna do a drop, they should go to the base that has the most workers at it, which is gonna guaranteed be your main base. Because your main base has a gas and all the mineral line. Your natural has. It's currently under saturation, and it has no gas. This is standard. So this is the, uh, not an intelligent way for the medevac to have traveled across the map. Just throwing it out there. Like, this dude is kind of totally missing the point of why you would make a medevac with Hellions. Now, if he did drop four Hellions in here, look at this. Like I said before, it's like he did exactly what I would have been afraid of earlier on with how you exposed yourself with no queens. And if you had creep tumors here, you would see it if it did drop here. But if it was dropping here, you would be blind and you would kill... Look at how undefended your main base is. Like, all of your drones would die. But he's doing it, like, right in the fucking front of your face. And he's like, hey, look at me, dude. I got a medevac in your face. Ha ha ha. And it gives you time to react. No. No. 
No. Get the, we did Steve Carell saying no repeatedly from Office. No. <laughs> this, this is, uh, what the fuck is this drop? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. No. Uh. Yeah, he killed. So far, three workers have died. That was that was a fucking fail by the Terran. That was not a success by the Zerg. That was just a fail by the Terran. Um, we're not talking about Terran, though. Who cares? That was just... People do weird shit. Uh, and that dude literally cut an economy. He literally did not make a command center for that. Like, talk about a bad investment. Um, now, speaking from the Zerg's point of view again. Simply put, do a build that is designed for speedlings in a speedling expand format. So, what does that mean? It means you don't take your third base until you're roughly around 30 supply. 28 to 30 supply is like perfect, okay? That's like a great time to take your third base. Builds like that are amazing. Like, for instance, if you go look at the, uh, you know, uh, Proxy and Chill, and anyone else who's watching this video, let me just say this first of all. If you're a platinum or below, I already, disclaimer, I do not recommend speedling builds. I recommend you do B to GM style builds, which are easier to do because speedling style builds only make sense if you have really good reactive scouting. And I do not expect anybody in platinum or below platinum to have good reactive scouting. Even for that, even like take that even further. I don't expect you even have good scouting or good reactions at all. Even, like if you, even if you do scout something, I don't expect you to understand what the fuck you see. Like that shit comes later once you actually understand how to play the game properly. <coughs> but if you're in Platinum, most people in those leagues don't even know how to play the game properly because their macro is fucked up. Like this. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> a four-minute expansion for a Hellion drop that killed three drones? <laughs> no, that's not prop that is not proper gameplay. That is not proper gameplay. I can say the same thing about Mike's build. It's not as extreme. It's not as extreme. But going for a third base and then going for a gas makes no sense if you want now 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 i'll say this so again i recommend you do bronze to gm style builds that's my recommendation until your diamond league however if you're like no fuck that shit bro i'm skipping the line man i'm going fucking speed lane style bitch if that's you well here's what you should look at go to my youtube channel and go to my coaching videos or my or rather my replay analysis videos it's a it's a literally a a section of videos called replay analysis and tips and tricks. These are the two replays you should look for of the videos. One of them is um, okay. What is what are they called exactly? Fuck, now I don't even remember what they're called. I don't remember exactly how I worded it, so I can find it in like two seconds though. Watch this. I go to my YouTube channel. I go to replay analysis tips and tricks. I click the playlist. It loads everything. I scroll all the way to the bottom. You can hold your mouse wheel in and go up and down, by the way, for people who don't know that. There's a tip on using a computer. It makes it go really fast instead of scrolling repeatedly. Boom. Uh, and then now we got right here. Uh, ZVT and ZVT. The Two of the last ones I did. Er... This is one of them. Okay, right here. Replay analysis. Diamond. ZVT doing a general defensive build and how to go to late game. That is a fucking great one to look at if you want to learn how to do speedling builds. That is a great one to look at for speedling builds. And then the other one is... How many did I do before I fucking uploaded it? Jesus. Where the fuck is it? It might be this one. It might be It might be the Don't Get Caught in the Roach Trap one. It might... Because I, I, I feel like it's been really recent. But these are Protoss, Protoss. It's probably this one. Don't Get Caught in the Roach Trap. It's probably that. I talk about it in that one, I think. Either way, this one right here will help you so fucking much. The ZVT doing a general defensive build and how to get to late game. That is speedling focused. 100 I just bit my tongue. 100% that is speedling focused. Go look at that. Go look at that. And uh, we'll, 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 talk, we'll stop talking about it now. Go look at that if you really want to uh, figure out how to do it. 
Um, if you're not on my YouTube right now, you can. If you're on my Twitch, you can type "Switch" my YouTube, just like someone in chat just did. Hell yeah! If you're on my YouTube, well, congratulations, you're already there. Go find that video, easy peasy. You can literally just type the replay, or the video name in as well, and it'll get you there. So you're not doing it at all this game, so it's kind of pointless to talk about it. We'll talk about what you should do from what you're doing now. So from where you're at right now, okay, this is what you should be doing. You should be taking a Zergling and going to all three of his potential natural third, fourth bases. Why is this important? You want to check and see if he has a natural because you don't even know if he does or not yet. You should check and see if he has a third. And when he does take one, you want to see both potential thirds when a command center tries to fly at it and land there. You want to you know this. Again, this is reactive scouting with Zerglings. You need to know these things. If you play blind as fuck, it's not going to help you. So, number one, get a, get a Zergling at every base. All three of these bases around his main. One Zergling and just leave it there. Next thing you should be doing is you should 100% be taking your layer and putting two drones. We already did put two drones back on the gas, so that's good. But you should be taking your layer. And then finally, you should be taking your tech whether it be a Roach Warren or a Bane Nest. Either one is fine at this point in time because you don't actually know what he's doing. All you know is he went 1-1-1. One, 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 and he went for a Hellion Drop. This could be for future bio. This could be for future mech. And the only way you can figure that out is with reactive scouting. You need to send Overlords over there too to find out what the fuck he's doing or have a Zergling run up and down the ramp and you can find out what is going on. Now, if I ran a Zergling up and down the ramp right now, what would I see? I would see a tank, a cyclone, a factory, and a tech lab upgrading. Like, you might see that tech lab. But either way, you would see that the tech lab is focused on the factory, and you'd see another factory being built. That's big. You wouldn't see the engineering beds too far away. You'd also see the second command centers right here. <clears throat> These are big tells that your building of choice should be a roach warren. Why should it be a roach warren? This dude looks like he's going to go fucking mech. This looks very mech-y. And if your opponent goes mech, and you go for mass speedlings and banelings, it's not always going to be the best trade for you. Because, for instance, look what he's upgrading. Blue flame. You know what he might do after he gets blue flame? He might l lift and land either this factory onto that reactor, or he might straight up just put this one on it, and he might start making a bunch of hellions. And if you have a bunch of fucking lings, and he's got a bunch of blue flame hellions... Backed up by like tanks or something, you're gonna probably have a bad day. Like Ling Bane is not ideal. It, it it can it totally can work against mech if you just have a massively better economy than your opponent. But in general, if your economies are somewhat similar, Ling Bane is not gonna trade the best against mech. It's just going unless you can like somehow again somehow sneak Zerglings in their base and kill a bunch of SCVs, and they're just like, oh fuck, I wasn't out of position. And then once again, what happens is, is you have a massively advantage of a, a massive advantage in economy because you killed their economy. But if you can't kill their economy and they're good about defending it, and you're forced to take fights with high supply mech, and you're using Ling Bane, you're gonna have a bad day. It's gonna feel really shitty. So to make your life easy, I would say just make a Roach Warren against the mech. That way you can shut down everything on the ground except for tanks. And if it's tanks. There's other options you can do, like Swarmhost is a great option. Swarmhost is like probably the easiest option I could tell you to do for low league. Otherwise, you could go just like Roach Hydra, and as long as you can keep a better economy, you'd crush tank as well. Because if you have better economy, Roach Hydra, you will fucking destroy tank-based mech either way. Because it's like 110 supply versus like 200 supply. But you have to scout. Re yeah, reactive scouting is how you have to play speedling styles. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so we'll see how you go from here. That is what you should be doing right now, though. Creep spreading always is, is uh, needless to say, like, that always should be happening. That's good that you're doing it. No layer, though. And now you're making, now you're starting to make a bunch of queens. I feel like this is incorrect. Like, making more queens on your natural third are fine, but you de definitely need to make a layer. You're getting pretty late right now. And here's the thing. If this guy goes into, like, let's just say hypothetically he went into, like, fucking Banshees. And two or three Banshees with Cloak showed up at your base... And you have no Overseer or no or Spore Crawler. You could lose a ton of drones. Or what if he kills your Queens? And then what if he pushes in with Hellions right after? And his Hellions just kill all your Lings? And his Banshees kill all your Queens? Like, that would suck. What if a Battlecruiser teleports in your base? 
Like, you need to uh, definitely get that layer going. You also need to scout and see if you took a natural. So there's zero scouting. So this is that. This is what's. It's that blind playstyle that makes it rough because now you're just guessing. Thank God your opponent's not very good though, because you're crushing them, regardless. Yeah, this guy is. This is this is that perfect example of someone trying to play way too fucking fancy. This guy is playing way too fancy. You know what? Here, I'm going to give you an analogy. You know what this is like? This is this is like this, okay? This is like there's a guy who watched a video on YouTube. And then in the video on YouTube, there's a guy who runs at a wall. And he runs up the wall. And then he does a backflip off the wall. And now we're watching a guy try to replicate it. And what he's doing to replicate it is he's never worked out in his life, really. He's super out of shape. And he's like, I'm going to fucking do a backflip off that wall right now. And you're watching a guy run fucking as fast as he can at the wall. And then at first... He trips and falls down on his face before he even makes it to the wall. And he gets back up and he's like, oh, fuck, I got this. Don't worry. I got this. And then he runs at the wall and he straight up face plants into the wall and smashes into the wall and then falls back and falls on his ass. It's like, that's not how you do that technique, dude. <laughs> uh, work on it. <laughs> like, what are these fucking drops? Oh, my God. Zero drones died again to another medevac <laughs> with blue flame aliens. <laughs> He'd be better off just simply driving them at your base. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> okay, so you need to scout, uh, Mike. <laughs> you fucking need to scout, dude. You cannot play speedling styles like this. Thank God, but here's the thing. You, you can also sometimes take... Or, not sometimes. If you know how to, like, read a build, you can react... To how your opponent throws their units away. So even though you're not scouting shit, knowing that you just killed four Hellions earlier, and you or I don't actually I don't I don't think you actually killed the medevac and the Hellions. I think you just killed two of the Hellions and he loaded up the other two in the main and he just flew away. And that was what was left over of it. So you killed you finally killed the remainder of what was left of his initial four Hellion medevac drop, which it did fucking nothing. But knowing that you killed his medevac and his four Hellions feels good. Because you know that he wasted. Uh, if you like, here's here's where it gets crazy. How long does it take to build a medevac? How long does it take to build a hillion? How long does it take to build a hillion when you have a reactor? How long does it take, or how much resources does a hillion cost? How much resources does a medevac cost? If you don't know any of these numbers, you should probably learn them over time because it makes your scouting go from knowing fucking nothing to knowing a lot. And I could tell you right now, what he just lost was 500 minerals. It's 100 minerals per Hellion, and there's four of them that died. And then it's 100 minerals per Medivac, and one of them died. And then it's 100 gas as well for the Medivac. Zero gas for the Hellions. So in total, 500 gas... Or, sorry, Jesus. 500 minerals and 100 gas. That's what he lost so far. And then on top of that, Hellions take 21 seconds to build, and you can build two of them at a time. So you know, ideally, he has wasted the last, like, 40-plus seconds of time on his reactor factory. If that's what he still was doing... 40 seconds down the fucking drain because they're all dead now and they didn't really accomplish much at all. And then on top of that, a medevac takes about like 29 seconds to build. So let me check the medevac. Uh, the Hellions are 100% 21 seconds, but medevac, is it 29? It's 30. I was one second off. So 30 seconds for the medevac. So he just wasted 30 seconds on the starport, 42 seconds on the, on the factory if he's doing perfect production. And you know that that's just down the fucking toilet for him. So what does that do? It makes any type of future pressure he could do a little bit weaker. This is how you reactively scout and react to people. Or I said react twice, but you get the point. This is reactive scouting. This is how you make judgment calls as to what you need and when you need it. And you don't just sit there going mass fucking drones blindly. And you don't sit there just making mass lings blindly. But what you've seen is... And also, here's another thing. You know what you saw as well, if you were paying attention? You saw those Hellions when they landed and smacked your drones like once and your queen like once right here. You saw the Hellions attack was blue. You have to pay attention to shit like this if you are playing Ling styles. This is why they're really hard. Watch, watch how his attack goes. It's blue flame. You can see it. <clears throat> you see blue flame and then he just loses the medevac. That tells you 
that he invested in a blue flame, which is I, they buffed it recently or a little while ago. And it, the new cost of blue flame, I believe, is 100 minerals and 100 gas. It used to be 150, 150, and they, they toned it down to 100, 100. So they made it better. So if you notice his blue flame, not only do you know that he invested even more fucking resources into this Hellion drop, but that's a big sign that he's going to go mech. That is a fucking big sign that he's going to go mech. That's like getting stim pack for Marines. You don't just go stim pack and go, ah, don't want it. I'm going to fucking tanks and Hellions now. <laughs> no, you fucking go bio if you get stim pack, generally speaking, and you're going to go probably into mech with a lot of Hellions if you're going to go blue flame. Now, yes, there are some builds out there that open up with blue flame and switch into bio. But again, you guys have to realize this is not fucking GM. This is not pro. This is platinum. So if someone's going to go blue flame, you can bet your ass that they're probably just going to commit to mech. It's very likely. Builds that get like blue flame and then rotate out of it are complicated. A little bit more complicated and they uh, will totally fucking confuse the shit out of a platinum player. Just like this one's doing right here. Like this guy's trying to hellion drop you and it makes no sense how he's doing it. So again, right now, lack of scouting is killing you. You're making a shitload of drones. This is risky, because you don't know what he's doing. You're making a Bane nest. So you're just autopiloting into Ling Bane. And probably into Hydra. Would be my guess. If you go Muta, I'm going to be like, holy fuck. No, 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 no. Also, be careful about ro rotating drones to your new bases like this that aren't even done yet when you're still missing all of your gas. Like, this base is undersaturated by one. This base is undersaturated by four because you have to have one for the gas and then three to fill it. This base is undersaturated by six. And you just transferred over five drones at a base that's not even going to be done for the next, like, 50 seconds. So be careful about doing shit like that. Make sure you uh, optimize your resources at existing bases before you prioritize outer new bases. Otherwise, it's just inefficient as fuck and wasteful. Okay, so you are going infestation pit, and hi okay, hydro good. Like at least you're, this is the easier standard version of units to make. You're going hydrogen. And you're, you're like, here's the thing too, is you're making random amounts of lings, and then you're making drones, and then you're making random amounts of lings, and you're making drones. You're playing the game so fucking blind, so blind, and you can, and again, if you're going to play blind, just do B to GM. You would be higher in supply right now if you played B to GM. The fact that, th here's the crazy thing, the fact that you went for three base really fast, okay, think about this. The fact that you went really fast three bases and your opponent invested into a fucking 111 blue flame hellion drop and then expanded to a natural at like four and a half minutes. Does he even have his natural done yet? Like, is it actually at the base? Yes, it is. These patches have barely mined. His gas has mined like 100 per gas. And he's barely mined shit off these patches. Like 200 max. 180 to 200 off each patch. You've mined a lot. You've mined like 600 off, each, off of each, each patch. Or like 500. Now here's the crazy thing. You are still almost tied with him in supply. You're 14 supply ahead of him right now. Granted you have max supply. You made a ridiculous amount of overlords. But you are 14 supply ahead of him. And you went 3 base opener. And he went super, 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 super delayed natural. And he's like just now starting his 3rd base. This guy's build was absolute garbage. And somehow you're like tied in supply with them. It means your ramping and pacing of your supply is fucking terrible. And why is it terrible? Because you keep making so many lings and then making drones and then making lings and then making drones and then making lings and then making drones because you are playing blind because you are not sure what is happening. You're like, I, I don't know. He could attack at any point in time. I have no idea. You have to play reactive scouting to play ling styles. But yes, your creep spread is very good. As That is a good quality of your gameplay. I like your creep. 
keep that up. But your your don't go speed link styles for now. Literally, I would say just stick to uh, beta jam styles of like Roach Hydra, and just start learning like what you, Terran is capable of with like the timing of how long it takes to build units, what things cost as well, and that starts that that is like the the initial first step into like actually knowing how to scout properly. Like, look how bad these links are. You killed fucking zero units right there, and you just lost all of your links that you just made, aside from, like, ten. Like, look at this. This is this is expected. This is why I said Roachhorn's ideal for mech, right? If he would have saw that he was going mech, if he would have scouted much earlier in the game. But look at units lost. Look at units lost right here. Uh, I, I, okay, I'm going to back up, like, two seconds. I want to get this exact. I don't want to, like, miss anything. That speed zone made it go really fast. Okay, so he's got five units lost. You have six units lost. Five and six. Terran's five, Zerg is six. Terran's five, Zerg is 43. That is how good Lings are against fucking Hellions. <laughs> that is why I said Roaches. <laughs> <laughs> but again you have to scout to know that so if you just blindly play roaches you're better off and focus on macro the banes did work there the hydras helped do work there but you still lost that fight You'll eventually, you're slowly starting to wear it down. And now it's very clear that you need to just keep making units because he's in your face right now. He's attacking you. And now, well, now he's backing off. Again, your, your creep is great, but your overall gameplay of everything else is uh, lacking and to be, uh, it's to be desired. Uh, so right now you should definitely be taking another base. You, you did. This is good. You should even take another base, I would say. You should be starting your sixth base right now, ideally. Because you're going to start running out of places to send your drones uh, for efficiency. You're oversaturated. You're oversaturated. You're now... You pulled off some drones off this base. But if you send them somewhere else, other bases are going to be well saturated. Um, and I would say, ideally for you as well, I would love it if you made maybe like seven more drones or six more drones. Okay, you're, you did. It's a good shit. You, okay. Jesus. You made a lot of drones. Just now as well. Know this as well. The second, the second that you get to four base saturation, which is 80 plus, if you're going for a Ling style, I don't give a shit how good at this game you are, make a macro hatch. At least one. And if you feel like you're not that good at macro, if you're like, if you're like this, for instance, where you're like, oh god, I have 134 energy, I have 108, I have 72, I have no queen at my third. Like, this queen rotated around. It, it obviously shouldn't be here. I, I, I know it rotated. That's why it's over here now. But these, this energy, no matter what, on all your queens is high as fuck. If you have problems like this, don't just make one macro hatch. Make, like, two macro hatches. Maybe even three. Like, make as many macro hatches as you feel like you're going to need to, like, actually inject your bases whenever you happen to do it. Like, so you can be like, inject, 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 like, three hatcheries all at once and actually spend your money to max quickly. Because... You will never max, you, you will never spend all your money going for a speedling style on one base per hatchery, ever. It will never happen. You will always have a fucking huge bank. So if you don't make a macro hatch this game, guys, don't be alarmed. He's going to have like 3,000 minerals in the bank. It's going to happen. Because you, you cannot physically spend your money. You're, you have no larva to do it. You have 110 drones. Holy fucking hell. That's a lot of drones. You want to probably stop again, seriously around like 80 to 85. Maybe 90 max. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's intentional or not, but yeah. So, I mean, you definitely macro better than your opponent does. 
You definitely do macro better than your opponent does. But this is good news. You can... I'm not going to lie. Watching you play, I do think you're very close to diamond. If you're not already in diamond, like you're, you're, this is platinum, you're very close to diamond. If you want, if my my personal opinion of how you're handling your money right now, without a macro hatch, you could actually play Ling Styles right now. You just really need to get better about fucking scouting. Your scouting is god awful. But once you actually made all those drones, you're actually doing a decent job of actually of spinning it, and you're, it's not actually you're still spinning your creep too. Don't worry, I sent drones to scout. Yeah, you sent fucking 11 drones to scout his fourth base. He's chilling. Such a waste of supply. <laughs> if you if you send your drones to his base to die, make sure they die. <laughs> now, I don't know if you went here because you saw the SCVs or not, but I love that you went to kill this base. This is exactly where you should have checked first before you take a fight against his base because you know he doesn't have this base or you actually don't know that. You should check this too. You know, I thought this was scouted, but it's not. Uh, your creep is about to scout it, which is great. Your creep spread's good. Your creep spread's way better than platinum. But uh, this being scouted was fine. I don't give a shit. It was by drones. Who gives a fuck? It's just the fact that you know there's not a base there is really good. You should definitely have killed this base if there was a base here, which is exactly what you're doing because now what you do is you starve the Terran. This is perfect. Super good. <clears throat> the only way you're going to beat this army <clears throat> you were doing it for a while but now you're not doing it anymore you need to have banelings you need banelings you should never engage like you cannot fight mech with lings the, o the only time it ever makes sense to fight mech with lings is if it's basically no hellions if you've already killed all the Hellions and you're overpowering Thors, tanks, Cyclones, things like that with no Hellions, then you'll wreck his ass. But if you fight against Mech with a bunch of Hellions and you have no Banes, and instead it's a bunch of Lings, you're going to get fucking owned. Like, you've, just as this fight started, you already I can already tell you've already lost like 30 Zerglings as the fight just started from one auto attack from like all of his Hellions. He has 14 of them. And all your lings die, and he he survives. Upgrades right now are two two, two one on Hydra, two two for Ling, and then the mech is three weapons, one armor. Upgrades, I'm gonna tell you right now though, weapon oh, it, armor and weapons we matter for Terran, they do. But if you're playing this kind of a style as Zerg, the only thing that matters for Zerg is your weapon upgrades. Your armor upgrades don't mean shit. A Hellion is gonna two shot a Zergling, no matter how many armor upgrades you have. A Hellion is gonna like four shot a Hydra. A tank is going to, like, if he has level 3 weapons, it's going to, like, let me see. Uh, where's a siege tank? I want to see a siege tank. It, it does, uh, what, 40? Fucking siege tank, bitch. Go. Now. Do it. Siege tank. It's 40 plus 4, 4, 4. So it's, it should be 52 damage, right? I, not, I'm, I don't think I'm wrong on that. Which means it would two-shot a Hydra. Yes, yeah, I was right. It's 52 damage. So... He'll two-shot a Hydra no matter what. It does not matter how many armor upgrades you have. Because if you have max armor on Hydras, it'll make it have three armor, which means the tank does 49 plus 49 when it's sieged. And 49 plus 49 is still more than 90. It's fi it's 98, exactly. So you're going to die. Like the, the, Your units will still die in the same amount of attacks either way. Carabas is kind of like irrelevant against a mech. It's good against Bio. It's irrelevant against a mech. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, your 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 uh, map map control though is fucking solid. You will one hundred percent be diamond if you keep playing like this over time and you just improve on other skills this creep is fucking monster 
for plat. You have to have good creeps there, by the way, to be... It, it's it's always required. Creep is creep never goes away for Zerg. So the fact that you already have creep this good is a massive plus. So, like, again, this army, you need Banes. You need to be able to break those Hellions with Banes, and then Ling and Hydra can jump on the rest. Your army composition looks decent. Too many Lings now, though, I would say. More Banes. Like, you need more Banes than that. Uh, with the, all the reinforcements you just had. Watch this. Come on, speed up. Go, go, go. <clears throat> Watch before the fight really starts. You're going to lose like 50 units before anything of Terran really dies. You ready? And then the fight will actually start. This is what happens when you make mostly Lings just engage first. It's not. It's it's better against Bio and Tank, but it's fucking terrible against Blue Familians. You need to make more Banes. Because now all you're doing is you're just thinning out your Bane numbers because you're wasting all your Lings like this. And then you can just re-max Lings if you break him really hard. And, <laughs> and you want to flood after that. <coughs> but watch. You're going to lose like 50 units before he really goes past like 80. So the fight's really starting now. Your banes are finally connecting, and you just lost like, what was it, like 30 lings? Something like that. It was uh, a lot. But he also move commanded his army, and he also sieged everything. So again, Terran could have killed more, but he's not microing the best. But now you're going to crush his ass because your Banes are now connecting and they're going to kill all the Hellions and all of his tanks are stacked. He has no spread at all. People who play like this, again, don't know what they're doing. And here's the crazy thing. If you play, if you can spread creep like this in Platinum, everyone who you play against in Platinum is going to be like this. They're going to be like, whoa, fuck. Oh my god, Zerg is all everywhere. Walking in the middle of a creep like that with speed zones especially next to you is just like, what the hell are you doing? A Terran was super YOLO. And now you should definitely go kill this base. Because he's had this base for a long time. And it, it, this, if he does have a new base, this would be it. Because you have creep actually covering every other base at this point. Yeah, dude, your creep is amazing. For pla This is like not platinum creep spread. This is master's creep spread. If not GM creep spread at this point. But just know, the better your opponents get, the harder it will be to spread your creep. So don't think that, oh, I got creep spread down. I'm good at it now. I'm always going to be good at it. This is good creep spread when your opponent has zero fucking creep retention. Like, he doesn't try to fight back at all. He, your, your opponent, this game put up no battle on your creep spread. He just let you do it. But when you start playing against better players who do actually fight your creep spread and they push it back, it suddenly becomes much harder. But the fact that you can do it this well already if your opponent is lazy about fighting it back is super, super good. That's very good. That's It's our, like a very good skill to have developed already. I don't really give a shit that you're making mass main hydra at this point. It's I would say it's not the best composition to make right now, but you could, honestly, you can make anything and win the game right now because your opponent is starving. He is officially starving right now. And you have the entire map to do whatever you want with. So you could literally, you could win however you want to win. <laughs> yeah, the game's over now. There's no way Terran, Terran's dead. Uh, but... Get better scouting. The biggest weakness that I see out of your gameplay is your scouting. You have to scout more. And when I say you have to scout more, you have to get a read as to... this is. These are the things that you need to discover. Every game is Zerg. Is the Terran going for a third command center really fast? Straight up, is he going for a natural, first of all? You didn't know that either. But is he going for a third command center really fast? Is he going for more production instead before a third command center that tells you a lot that tells you if he's going to do a timing if it like realistically is he should or is he going to go for just more economy those are two big questions you need to answer which one is he going to do another one you need to answer is he going to go mech or bio what composition am i going to be dealing with another one you need to answer is uh 
like what is at his base in terms like this is a bit more advanced but like what upgrade buildings are at his base does he have a fast armory does he have a fast fusion core does he have a fast double ng base does he have uh like what does he actually have other than his barracks or factories it tells you more about what build it could be if it's someone going for a super fucking fast armory it's probably going to be hellbats it could also be widow mines like for like you know the fact that the armory makes widow mines permanently cloaked shit like that like things like this make more sense the more information you give yourself also another thing to scout with your zerglings how fast is he going to actually even if he does take a third command center how fast is he going to plant that shit at his third base how fast is he going to take his natural base at his natural like it, that, not build it in the main base and sit there forever how fast is he actually going to take the bases these are things you really need to know Vi, would you recommend overload speed i would eventually I talk about this literally in the other just here's what I would say. I go really heavy into detail. Like I go watch the other coaching lesson I did with the or like replay analysis I did. The thing I showed you earlier in, the, in this video right now. Go watch that. It's going to answer so many questions for you right now. Make sure you go watch that if you really want to improve upon your zerg. It's not a platinum level lesson. It's a master's level lesson. But your gameplay, your creep spread is in my opinion already masters your biggest weakness is your game sense and your map awareness and your uh your scout reactive scouting all that shit is your downfall your macro is not your macro is above plat your crew spread is definitely above plat your mechanics of zerg are above platinum but i could totally see you dying to people because you don't know how to react to shit like someone who just does a timing and you're in that phase where you're like drones, lings, drones, lings, I don't know. And then he does a fucking full all in and you just die. And you're like, well, shouldn't have droned as much as I did. And then someone who like is defensively greedy as fuck and you're going drones, lings, drones, lings, never scouting anything. And suddenly you push their base and they're on full-fledged sky toss now. And you're like, oh, well, I should have scouted so I could have actually used my lings to punish him for being so greedy. Like you're giving yourself no fucking information at all in the early game in the mid game at all you're just waiting till your creep gets across the map to just shove pushes which is a good strategy it's fucking strong because it means your mechanics are really strong but again if you go link styles you have to fucking scout a little bit because you have to change droning heavy or unit heavy based on what you see you counter it so if it's greedy you could counter it with units if you want to but you're, that means you're going to be aggressive and you're going to attack or you can counter someone else's greed with your own greed. And you can both be making an economy. That's fine. If you scout someone's going to be aggressive, you cannot counter that with drones. You counter that with army. Because you, you need to now defend what his attack is going to be. And being able to analyze and, rec and recognize what an actual aggressive build looks like is a big deal. It's a big deal. And that takes experience and time. Knowing what the Terran is capable of over time. And I'm going to tell you right now, this dude's build was aggressive. This dude did not take a third command center until he made a bunch of fucking buildings. And he didn't even take his natural command center until after he made 111. And then he took the natural command center as he made factory number two. That is such a late factory. Or sorry, it's such a late command center. It's such a fast second factory. That's, that is definitely focused on aggression, which is why this dude kept being aggressive. This guy is an aggressive player. But I hope this makes sense. Again, highly recommend you go watch that video as well because it goes more into detail about how to just thoroughly play a Zergling style. I couldn't really tell you much this game because you weren't doing any of it right, honestly. Your, your mechanics were carry you hardcore, but your gameplay of Speedling styles is completely wrong. So that video might help you understand how to better your Speedling play styles. In your opinion, do you think I can hit Masters if I improve my economy in scouting? Yes. Your creeps... guy. I'm just letting you know something right now, Proxy and Chill. Creep spread is one of the biggest things everyone struggles with. And your your uh, no retention creep spread, like no... Uh, your opponent doesn't give a fuck about your creep spread, okay? Your creep spread in that situation, like this, is amazing. Just know, though, that your creep spread will not look like this every game. It will not. I guarantee you it will not. If I, pl if I played you in a game right now with my Terran, your creep spread look would look like shit. And why is that? Because if you play against someone that actually focuses on creep control 
it's not that easy. It's hard. It's actually really hard to spread your creep when you play against someone who tries to, to deny it. So, but it's it, but I'm giving you props though. It is super good, regardless of the fact that you like you're able to actually spread it this well. Prove it, vibe guys. You're idiots. <laughs> you guys are fucking idiots, guys. He's fucking platinum, dude. My turn is not platinum. Okay, but like this, I feel like you're not gonna be platinum for long either, proxy and chill. Like you're actually uh, playing above what I think platinum is. It's just that your opponent had zero emphasis on controlling your creep. And that's where creep spread is really hard, is when you also spread it while your opponent denies it. That's fucking hard. That is when StarCraft gets really difficult. So, keep that in mind. Keep up what you're doing. Fix your scouting. Fix your, like... When I say fix your scouting, don't think that it's like, oh, I'll just watch one video and suddenly I'm good at it. Masters. It take it, It's something that takes time. Learning scouting... Learning reactive scouting, learning how to manage your army better in terms of what you're making and how you're doing all this shit. These are things that take a lot of time to learn. Like it takes like you need to be comfortable with it to get better at it. So be patient with yourself. But you are. You, do you have the tools to be Masters League? Fuck yes, you do. 100%. I believe you have the tools to be. Ma if I sat there with you for a month and I coached you, I guarantee I would you'd be Masters. I guarantee you'd be Masters. Because I, I can already see the potential of you being Masters in this replay. You definitely have more, much more potential than your average Platinum player. Uh, anyways, like I said, for I'll say it one last time. Go watch that video that I talked about earlier in this video again. Uh, it'll help you a lot with your progression as how you want to develop as a player. And also anyone else who's in the same boat as... Uh, Mike over here, go watch it as well. I again, I linked it in the video. You saw it. It's in the replay analysis section. It's at the bottom. Uh, you'll see it. It's in the early part of this video. But much love, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next replay analysis. Until then, good luck. Take it easy. Stay healthy. Stay happy. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace, guys.